What's the best way to set up a React Native application for production in 2024? Let's talk about your options and the best packages that you should use. Hey everyone, what's up? This is Simon from Galaxies.dev and in this video I will go through the whole tech stack for a React Native application in 2024. You might be new to React Native, you might be overwhelmed by all the choices and to be honest, I definitely was when I got started with my first React Native application. Therefore, I will give some recommendations for categories like routing, data fetching, state management or even UI libraries so you get a few choices and you know what you can or should use in your application. Keep in mind that there's always an alternative choice. You know, the React ecosystem is huge and there's always a different package so take everything with a grain of salt but most of the choices are really the basics for a React Native application in 2024. Also if you're serious about learning React Native this year check out galaxies.dev which is my online school and use the code galaxies24 to get a 25% discount on your first three months of Galaxies Pro. So check out galaxies.dev and use code galaxies24 for 25% off. So it's 2024 and you decided to build a React Native application. Congratulations, first of all, that's a great choice. First question, or actually question zero is, should you use TypeScript? And the answer is yes, please, just use TypeScript. It might be complicated in some cases, but usually in most apps, it's really the best thing you can do to have type safety in your application and it just helps your whole development team to build better applications. Really, please, TypeScript, yeah, yes. Then the first real question is, should you use the React Native CLI or should you use Expo? This question actually came up like the first thing when you go to the React Native documentation as there are two ways. In my experience, the short answer is Expo. The long answer is Expo. <laughs> because it gives you freedom. In the past, React Native CLI had some advantages over Expo, but I made a long video about that where I compared everything from Expo and the React Native CLI. Just to give you the quick uh, gist of that video, you can use Expo to get started, which is a lot easier. And once you need more flexibility, more freedom, there's something called Expo Pre-Build, which basically allows you to build an iOS and Android project right in your code. And then you can do native changes. You can have config plugins, native modules, and all these things. So you are not limited with Expo or by Expo anymore. Next question, what should I use for routing? Should I use Expo file-based routing? So the Expo router, or should I use the traditional React navigation? And please, there's not really a third option like not using any kind of navigation is not really a good idea because with react navigation you get like a stack tabs or a drawer menu and that works natively in your ios and android application my recommendation is to actually use the expo router i've got several videos already about building tabs draw and all kinds of navigation even the live stream where we build everything together so just check out the videos on this channel basically file-based routing is the standard you see in next.js in sweltkit and all sorts of web frameworks and it also works great for native applications. Under the hood, Expo Router is actually still using React Navigation, so you don't really lose it, you still benefit from the knowledge that you might have. But in my experience, Expo Router works easily because you just set up the files and you got the routing. But in the end, your app will be more structured. And my recommendation is to go with the Expo Router also because they have really, really cool things coming to Expo Router like API routes in future versions. Maybe it's even released already. I don't know, but you're gonna benefit from all the cool stuff that's coming over the future as well. Next question, what UI library should I use? If you just do a React Native application, you can use Stylesheet first of all, which is a bit like CSS, but in JavaScript. In general, that works pretty good, but if you want a real design system, you could go for something like Tamagui, which is like the latest and greatest, and next to that, there's also Native Wind coming up, which is an implementation of Tailwind for React Native. So I think those are like the two biggest things we're gonna see in 2024. There are other things like GlueStack UI, which is up and coming, or UniStyles, which is an improvement of style sheets. But overall, this is a really opinionated topic. I made a video about a lot of different UI libraries. There's also paper and um, like material design. This really depends on the actual needs of your application. So if you want more flexibility, you're gonna pick the one thing. If you want something that works really cross platforms, so you maybe wanna do iOS, Android, and web, then something like Tamagui works really well. Just give it a try and see how well these things work for you. Um, there's not really one best solution for a UI library. And even if you decide to go with Stylesheet, that's totally fine as well. Don't worry too much. What should I use for state management? Well, in the past there was Redux, which was like the most popular thing a few years ago. But over time, people kinda came to the conclusion that it just 
too much, too bloated, it slows down your application because it just has a single store. Um, there are other solutions. My preferred one is actually Zustand, or as the US population might say, Zustand, um, but it's a German word which means state. So that is one solution that's really great and works really well. There are other things like MobX, I think Infinite Red is using this and Jamin proposed this on Twitter. I think there are a few cool solutions out there, there's also Yotai. Again, there is not a clear winner for me in this category. So look at the different getting started guides and just get a feeling for how these things work and uh, think about what your application in the end might need. How should you fetch data in your application? Should I just use fetch because I just make simple calls or should I use Axios because it's an improvement over fetch? Well, the answer is please just use 10 stack query. You might say, oh, 10 stack query, isn't that like an additional state management and I don't wanna do, mm. There's a great article that you should definitely read and that explains why you want to use this. So even if you just have to do a simple fetch call, there are like 10 different things that could go wrong, starting from race conditions to uh, incorrect error handling. And 10 stack query just makes this a lot easier. So do yourself a favor, use 10 stack query, also known as React query before, but now it's uh, usually called 10 stack query. Use it in your React Native application. You're gonna thank me in about two weeks latest. Next to data fetching, we also have data storage. So this one's again a bit more complicated. There are solutions like async storage, there's SQLite, maybe you're using a server, maybe you're using something like MMKV, and this depends on the requirements of your application. So there's no one size fits all solution. Even we have a lot of uh, like structured relational data, going for something like a SQLite implementation definitely makes sense. Maybe you also wanna tap into the local first approach which is becoming very popular and I think we're gonna see more about this this year so you could do something like watermelon DB uh, or there's like power sync or something like that but if you just want to store a bit of data I highly recommend you use MMKV over async storage pretty much all the time I talked with Mark Rosavi before on the podcast um, it is just a great solution to synchronously access data because it uses C or C++ under the hood and it is not an async implementation. MMKV also has hooks so you can instantly get value and you don't need to wait for something. It just makes life a lot easier and the usage is really easy. So if you just want to store a bit of user settings and data and stuff, use MMKV. If you want to make this secure, you can use Expo Secure Store and maybe you can even use this with MMKV. Maybe that could work as well. But again, no clear winner, just think about the requirements. And I also have a video about the different data storage solutions in case you need more info about that. How should I animate my React Native applications? Please just use reanimated. It is the best thing on earth. Uh, well, maybe that's a bit too much, but it is really great. It makes animating your stuff a whole lot easier. Yes, there's an animated package with React Native and you can use the native driver, but reanimated makes it a whole lot easier. Last year, reanimated introduced also shared element transitions. I think at this point, maybe there are even improved um, so there's a whole lot of great stuff beyond uh, reanimated and also if you want let's say just easy animations you could also use Moti which is from Fernando Rojo uh, I also had him on the podcast before where he explained everything from Moti to Dripsy and to Solito but Moti is what you might want to use as well as it makes it really easy to add simple animations to different components of your application so if reanimated feels too much of a learning for you in the beginning Give it a try to Moti and see if that works because it still uses reanimated under the hood as a driver if you select. These were like the most basic categories that we needed answers for. Now, I have a few additional things that I just want to highlight because you're watching this video as you're starting with React Native and you just want some guidance. And I certainly was looking out for these things that I now want to mention in the beginning. So, how should you debug your application? If you're using Expo, it's a bit complicated. There are like different debuggers like Reactortron um, or others that you could use. But overall, I think we're going to see in 2024 that Expo will not rev revolutionize the space of debugging, but make it a whole lot easier. They already introduced debugging uh, tools last year to see the HTTP calls of your application. You can of uh, course see the console logs and all of that stuff. So my recommendation is to see what Expo is doing this year in terms of debugging. There are still other great solutions like measuring performance with Flashlight. Um, that is a different tool from someone uh, from Flashlight from Alex Moreau, of course. So there are different tools, but for debugging, I just use the Expo tools for debugging, which are for the basic stuff 
uh, enough. If you later need more tools, you're gonna find different uh, experiences like using Flipper or using even Xcode or Android to tap into really the hardcore things about your applications. In terms of error reporting, I don't really have a favorite, but I just wanna mention this for completeness. So there is Bugsnack, which is a great tool for error reporting or Sentry, which is of course known as the sponsor or owner of the Syntax podcast at this point. So in both cases, I think they're great solutions. Check out which of those you prefer. Finally, I just want to mention this. If you're looking for a real cross-platform solution with React Native, which not only runs on iOS and Android, but also on the web, there are two solutions, like two ways. There's the Expo Router way, which now at this point allows us to use CSS to have specific layouts for the web. And yes, that can work. But in many cases, you want to have something more elaborate and more advanced. And usually what most experts recommend at this point is to use Expo in combination with Next.js and unifying this using Solito. So check out the podcast episode I did with Fernando Rojo uh, on all of this. He's the creator of Solito. Basically, you think about this as a mono repository where you have a Next.js application and an Expo application and a shared folder. And in that shared folder for all the linking and routing, you're going to use Solito, which is just a wrapper around the next link and the expo link component. So it just unifies it so you can make it work across web and native. It's a great solution for sharing stuff. And also this works really, really well with Tamagui. So if you want to have like a full solution, it would probably be Next.js with Expo in a Turbo Repo Mono repository using Tamagui. And by the way, Tamagui also has a paid product called Takeout, which has exactly this setup with a lot of screens out of the box. Finally, I just want to mention that for all the things you're going to build in your React Native application, there are tons of great components. I did a video on, I think, 10 components or nine components in the React Native world that you should check out because from a chat, from a list to loading and skeleton views. Everything has been implemented in the React Native community and ecosystem already. So please don't reinvent the wheel all the time and try to search for a specific solution before you get into like three days building your own chat component while there's actually an even better uh, open source com component out there already. All right, I hope this gives you a broad overview about all the packages in the React Native world that you can or should use in 2024 to build your app application. I actually expect the most movement in the debugging and the UI library category. Everything else like state management, data storage, I don't expect really huge changes. Um, but for debugging, I think we're going to see a lot from Expo and for, uh, what was the second category? And for UI library, so we're probably going to see more from Tamagui, but also more from Native Win, which at this point has already released its next version or is at the uh, border of release it. Do you say it like that? I don't know. And of course, there are many more great community packages. As I already said, I had a video with 10 components, but there are many more components. And just because I let them out or left them out, it doesn't mean they suck. It just means that I probably don't know about them yet and that's okay. So if you have a great package that should be included in this list, please drop a comment below so people who come to this video can see, oh, I should probably also use this package or that package. So please do me a favor and leave a comment. If you're watching this video but you're still unsure whether you should use React Native or Flutter, check out a video I did about why I moved to React Native where I explain my reasons which have some personal background but also cover the great things about React Native. So hopefully you're gonna build some really, really epic apps in 2024. If you did so, please leave a link below as I will include them in one of my upcoming app reviews. We got a whole year in front of us, so let's build something epic. Subscribe to the channel for more great videos coming on React Native this year, and I will catch you in the next one. So until then, happy coding, Simon.